As you start to get more and more into blockchain, one term that you're going to hear a lot is Byzantine fault tolerance. And if you're wondering what that means, that very strange, cryptic sounding term, that can be explained with a story. In 1982, a mathematical problem was formulated called the Byzantine Generals Problem. And without getting too detailed into the mathematics behind it, essentially what the Byzantine Generals Problem was a story about two empires fighting a battle. Uh, one empire exists within the confines of a walled city. The second empire has several generals surrounding that walled city, each with their armies waiting to attack. And the balance of power is very, very evenly matched between these two empires. And it is such that if all the generals agree to attack at the same time, uh, they will have enough power to overcome the empire in the city and win the campaign. Uh, if they, for whatever reason, are not able to coordinate their attack simultaneously, and even one general misses the message, uh, well then the uh, empire surrounding the walled city is going to lose the campaign in the war. So the Byzantine generals problem explored a really key area of cryptography, in fact the heart of what cryptography is, which is how do I exchange messages with someone in an environment where they may become corrupt? You have to understand the only way these generals had to communicate was to send a disguised messenger through the city with a message to deliver to the other generals. And so this always posed the risk, if you're a general and you're getting a message from one of these messengers, how do you know or how can you believe with greater than random certainty that the message you're getting is reliable and it hasn't been tampered with. And this, again, was a problem that was postulated back in 1982 and went unsolved until 2008 when the anonymous Satoshi Nakamoto proposed a solution to this problem. And essentially what the solution entails is all of the generals hiring as many mathematicians as they can. When we talk about Byzantine fault tolerance, we're talking about the generals having more access, having more mathematicians or more computing power on their side than the empire within the city. Uh, so if I'm the generals and I can hire more mathematicians, then that means that I can encrypt my messages going through the city with greater and greater complexity. And if the balance of power becomes greatly tipped in the favor of the generals outside the city, they can use encryption methods which are so complex that there really is no real chance or a very small chance that any of the mathematicians inside the city will be able to intercept that message, decrypt it, change the contents, re-encrypt it, and do so in a time quick enough that the generals don't notice anything has happened. And so this is Byzantine fault tolerance. Um, this is the fault tolerance mechanism that we see used in most public blockchain solutions right now, including Bitcoin, including Ethereum, although Ethereum is working on transitioning to a system called proof of stake, which we'll talk about in a later section. But when you hear Byzantine fault tolerance, often abbreviated as BFT, all we're talking about is this idea that blockchains become secure if they have more computing power, more hash power in the chain than off the chain. So solutions like Ethereum with 16,000 plus nodes, or Bitcoin, the largest blockchain network that there is with over 30,000 nodes, offer us a high degree of security and immutability because the computing power on those networks is so great that there's really no reasonable chance that an adversary could ever control as much or more computing power to attack the data on that blockchain. And if someone ever were to, chances are the economics behind it would be such that they would spend more to simultaneously harness all that computing power than they could possibly stand to gain. And so this is Byzantine fault tolerance. It is the root of cryptography, which is simply the study of how do we send information back and forth securely in the presence of adversaries and bad actors. And it's what underlies all the security and immutability that we get in blockchain.